Miss Grumman's is Sti Comical Beats. <laughs> Like house, like text, like hardcore. Karate DJ. Karate DJ. This romance is comic book. I've been here a long time. Nine and a half years. Long time. It's been cool, bro. I did about 200 songs. I did Sex Style, Black Elvis, Octagon. It made me open up musically on different pages. I got more broad. I don't think I would have made a lot of them records living in New York. I think I would have, you know, by me traveling, I think it made my albums more universal. You know, it shouldn't be a problem with records breaking into different territories. But unfortunately, some music don't because some people just work on a small, small zip code of music. Huh? They, they want to hook up at one? Yeah. One o'clock, let's do a dope one, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. We could do that. I got a fever and everything, you know what I'm saying? You be fly, you gonna be fly. It's me. What you doing? Yeah. It's me. What you doing? Yeah, come on here. I'm trying to lights on it here. Is, uh, this is why we do, uh, I do my photography for the girls. That's Mick. Mick used to be a big, uh, Mick makes clothes. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Sorry. It's really a film crew here. What's cracking? You filming me right now yeah. or what? So do you guys know about Ultra? Ultra Magnetic? Hey, did you got the uh, Critical Beat Down album? That's a masterpiece. Keep, keep going, man. Mm. I don't feel like it. They use a simple back and forth, the same old rhythm that a baby can pick up and join right with them, but their rhymes are pathetic. They think they cope instead of using nursery terms, at least not poetic on an educated base, intelligent wise. As the record does turn, you learn, plus burn by the flame of the lyrics, which cooks the human brain, providing heating knowledge by means causing pain, making migraine headaches. Your cells start to melt while the techniques spend the waxes on the felt, motivating clockwise. The more you realize more loves moving steady by most you're ever ready. I even forgot. You just kidding. Look what you did. But I was that the first shit guy. was so futuristic. 
And in what year was that? Like 86? 86. Because in the second verse, it was like, choosing scientific matter, I probe for evidence, leading melodies obtaining slang, positive beams of the average formulation applied mechanically, maintainable display, expressed by alternating. I was using big ass words. But anyhow, I took LSD. And uh, the one thing I was trying to do, I, was, I, was, I remember I was a, a drummer then. And uh, I could only get so far playing drums. I took LSD and my playing was just the greatest. I sat in on a couple of Miles Davis concerts. I expanded my brain, but I had to continuously take it uh, t two to three days prior to playing and then smoke a little weed to enhance it again. You know, so you could, because you, you know, you get the flashbacks, but it enhanced it. Because I couldn't play while tripping, but I understood what I was doing while I was tripping, and I could see the musical notes coming out the speakers, and I said, that's where I'm missing. I'm not catching the beats, and then the changes, and then the symbols and the times. I remember I used to rewind y'all shit. I broke so many tapes rewinding y'all shit. Did this motherfucker just say that? Yeah, I said. Who we wrote, I mean, I was writing that. We was writing ahead of our time. See, like, exactly, and you see that offbeat rhyme style that you had? Yeah. Well, only a few people had what me, I think, uh, KRS. It was only a few good lyricists back then. I have to get people away from their computers and television sets. Get them away from cigarettes and coffee. Get them back to drinking champagne and smoking weed. It's the only way. Well, that's about it for me now. <laughs> you playing the game It's all plain You want me to win Ha General Who are back up in the place Today I'm gonna to speak about them girls them girls them girls them girls One day this girl step up to me talking about eating well we do everything, you know, we try to look beautiful, we do everything just to look right. I tell her, woman, what is beauty, you know? I don't know, I don't know. If me feel connection, communication with you, me feel it, you know. Nothing more, nothing less. So I say like this, Gillespie. Bless all woman. Damn. We got John Bushimi in the house. We got Mr. Len. And we got E Mortal Tech Mother Hub and Meek. I believe there are certain steps to revolution. First step is a revolution of the mind. When you start to question everything that's just given to you. When you start to say, hey, listen, I'd rather have people hate me for the person I am than like me for someone I'm not. Immortal technique, psychotic nigga to spit calm. I got a shitty attitude like TC Islam. Then there's a social revolution when you and all your peoples get together. And when you come together, your voice is a lot stronger than if you're alone. And there's a, just a motivational factor. If I'm sitting at home alone, I may not want to do anything. But if I'm sitting at home with 17 people, I'm gonna have to do something. The freestyler's missing the ball. Uh, Pause for a second, now I'm back. Uh, to remove the cataracts from your third eye. Expand your uh, mental vision, uh, expand the lyricism, expand the decisions you're making when you try to get a deal or try to perpetrate the people that you keeping it real. We got Governor Rock Tom Ridge, the most racist one of all. What about Operation Enduring Freedom for Mumia Abu Jamal? And then there's also an economic or a political revolution that's involved. And if the government won't secede then, then it's obviously resorting to some tyrannical means of oppression, and that's when you take it to the next level of revolution. When you say, all right, you know what? You won't give me my freedom even though I've done everything within the channels of this government that you set up. It's like a video game. You get to the end and you beat the game, and the game refuses to let you beat it. So you say, you know what? Now I'm gonna open the cartridge, and I'm gonna rip out the little part, <laughs> the little part of the chip that says I can't win because I'm gonna win this game. When you step to technique, I'll beat you to sleep, rip the concrete out under your feet. And I'm not dissing, so listen, I piss on a conservative Christian, and that's how it happens. I'm start unleashing the demons, crushing opponents, smash you into components. And yo, immortal technique, step through interdimensional portals, back to when you were a fetus. Fuck your mom while she's pregnant, crush your skull with my penis. But, um, a lot of people skip steps. A lot of people say, all right, well now I have an ideology, and now I want to throw bombs. That's not revolution, that's just chaos. And um, people target civilians, 
That's terrorism. Yeah, got load up again. These motherfuckers are gonna come back for us. We're ready. We gotta be prepared in this day and age. We gotta be prepared for whatever the fuck comes at us. Lord, um, Cause we are living revolutionarily. It's liberty or it's death. It's freedom for everybody or freedom for nobody. Mortal technique. So what else do you wanna know? You wanna know about the CIA coming to one of my shows? They were disguised very badly. <laughs> they were like, you're a mortal technique, right? I'm like, yeah, that's me. Mr. Immortal Technique, we'd like to buy three of your CDs. I'm like, okay, there's no law against that. So they went and bought them and they were like, thank you very much, sir. See you soon. <laughs> I guess that's democracy and freedom in America. And you guys tapped my phone very badly. There are a couple of my peoples that are just brainwashed. Like, they're in the military. I got one friend who's going to, uh, who's going to fight in Afghanistan. And I can see his mentality already. He's like, well, if I have to kill people, I'm just gonna kill them. People are trained to think a certain way. And if you can dehumanize people, then it's easier to kill them. So killing people is easy. It happens like that. It's not like the movies where they fall down. Oh, no, no. <clears throat> drop like a fucking heavy bag. It's just justifying it to yourself afterwards. That's the problem. And I think when you're in the military, they do a very good job of teaching you how to justify killing to yourself. For what country, God, whatever the crap. And yo, it's like that. I shared cells with lifers when I was stuck in prison, smoking Buddha like I was burning someone else's religion. Right now we're just walking around Harlem. Not for the salary, but rather for the culture. Rappers get ripped apart like a feeding frenzy of 22,000 vultures. That's real. If it wasn't, then... Just, and I'm coming like that, ripping it off of the dome. Hey, yo, Lord Seer, you can have the mic back. I'm done, I'm going home. Viva la revolucion! Viva la revolucion! Yeah. Ultra magnetic MC. Ultra magnetic MC. Ultra magnetic MC. You gave a fuck what the mood of hip hop was. You did what Cool Key felt. Right. I mean, that's why you created Dr. Octagons and Black Elvises. It changed now. The new that shit is bullshit now. The new involved. They evolved. Because it's like watered down. The respect ain't there no more, man. Yeah, everybody's just trying to get paid or be puffy or be Russell or be Suge fucking night. And I give what? a fuck about that bullshit. Like, an album come out right now, it's, it's a sort of tracks from different producers. Remember you bought Cameo, you got a sound. You bought, um, when you bought Slave, you bought a sound. I'm saying now you're getting um, a scattered producer album. People are trying to get people with what they call a platinum beat. Well, they buying one producer all the way right, across the board. That's what I'm saying. So what I'm saying, it's like, that's getting and monotonous. Then, and then, and right, and then you, you have motherfuckers that don't know their history. You know, you got a lot of old school niggas like me and yourself and then the, the new school niggas or the youngsters will say, we tripping. Right. By, you know, but it ain't about no tripping. It's just, it's really keep that shit real and not with just saying, keep it real. Gotta keep that shit real. But the minute the motherfuckers get to sell out, them motherfuckers take off and sell out. So all they keep it real is keep, they keeping it real phony. You gotta ask yourself though, Keeping it real, is, is there really an underground? There's no, I think there's no more such thing as underground right now. Either. Okay, the underground to me is too under. The overground is too over. We don't have no fucking middle ground. Well, your records are not eligible for right. rotation. Right. You can't even hear a dark track on the radio. Everything right. is like la la, right. like right. Right. Walt Disney on the radio. Right. So it's like, you got the hardest rappers now rapping on like the sweetest tracks. Right. Like the average black singer has to sing like, oh. I care for you. Right. Like, like, look at the songs Babyface used to sing. Mm -hmm. It's like, do a do a, a, a urban artist have to get that pop to sell a record instead of them being themselves? It's like if I was the cool key theory. <laughs> right. Why? Why? Like, how pop should we have to go pop to be pop? They're right. stealing. 
Right. They're wow. stealing. Right. I'm They're saying. absolutely stealing. Those right. are the people who are hijacking it. Right. Those are the people who are picking our pockets and don't give a fuck. All they're trying to do is make some money and then run off with the money. Rap is gone from its Grand Wizard Theodore Essence and Park and... She told me you gave her these. Oh, the girl? These are nice pictures. <laughs> She's nice, nice chick. Actually, on this couch I'm sitting on. What are you working on right now? Uh, we try to make some, uh, I don't know, music. You don't know yet what it's going to be? Yeah, like. but it's music for sure. <laughs> anyway, we're recording after we sing. What's we going to make? Yeah, is that a good answer? Motomotoは、あの、元々の自分がやってたことは、あの、ヒップホップのすごいベーシックな。ブレイクビーツで2枚。で、あの、繰り返してブレイクビーツを作って、それにあの、他のインストルメントっていうか楽器が混ざるっていう感じでやってたんだけど、それにCDJとかエフェクターとかを混ぜて、もうちょっとな
Raising levels, Jim. Flight when I was in New York, I used to always wonder, who made that stuff for Flash? And they grew up where I lived at, in the Bronx. And they had a lot of those things, man. Every different colors and different German hats. But you didn't only make stuff for um, Grandmaster Flash. Name a few, the Madonna. Um, my favorites were uh, probably Billy Idol and Steve Stevens and them, because they got they got all my notorious shit. Michael Jackson, you guys. Michael Jackson actually knocked off all the, the shit Steve Stevens had on. Right. That whole thing from, from the bad shit. Oh, you made that jacket, that, that red jacket with the zipper? All that shit. <laughs> Billy Idol then spent fifty thousand dollars in one year. Uh, here's those pants. Pants, the belts. Doug, I gotta ask you one more question. I'm just saying, I, I think hip hop culture right. is being robbed. Mm -hmm. I think corporate, corporately, the, the, they took hip hop from us. No, let me speak on that. First of all, I think we did it to ourselves. The gangster mess that we created here was a lot to do with our own fault because we never turned the tide. It was time for us, as the people who understood hip hop, to make that change. Well, rap went that we way. We did it to ourselves. Everybody got greedy. And whatever worked, then you had a ton of motherfuckers bum rushing it. I'm sorry. I'm going to keep this real right now. We did it to ourselves. I did a song about 15 years ago with Millie Mel, Grandmaster Flash. It was called White Lines. That song was the only rap song that was number one in Europe for 10 years, uh, not number one, I'm sorry, it stayed in the top 10 for 20 years. <laughs> it was number one for about five years. It was the only time in the history of rap that they, there was one rap song that stayed on the charts for 20 years. White lines, do -do 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 bass. You know, even when I worked at Death Row, when I saw the integrity was leaving, that's when I left. I left Death Row at, after uh, above, the, um, above the Rim soundtrack. I did the Dre first album, The Chronic, I did Snoop Doggy style, mm -hmm. and then I did the Chronic. And when I came back from Atlanta, the last Freaknik they had out there, I was the fuck out of there like last year. You understand what I'm saying? Because I well, seen all the work. killing and mayhem. I did all the shit for Easy E. I started the motherfucking rap department at Priority Records. I started the rap department at uh, Capitol Records. I started the rap department at Warner Brothers, MCA, and all those motherfucking places. So I know where my integrity lies. Well, you taught them the game, bro. I taught everybody the game. Did motherfuckers mm -hmm. reach back to me? Hell no. But am I mad? No. I'm just telling you how full of shit the game is and how we did it to ourselves. We did it to ourselves, and I even did it to myself. But we don't do music every day. We do other stuff, like photography. It's like one of our big things. Taking pictures of chicks and developing them. You know, that was a good thing. I've, I've been in, I got like three, four cameras, so we do a lot of stuff. We are working on some new stuff though. I'm trying to get a magazine soon. That's one of my next things. Cool magazine. We like the peace out here. Some of the little birds and stuff. It's like, it makes you meditate. What's up, Mick? The girls didn't come yet, huh? Uh, I think I'm gonna retire for the evening. I hear you, see you later. <laughs> Mick is the top tailor out there doing the clothes for Grandmaster Flash. Artiste. The artiste. Hi, hi. <laughs> Musically, tailor-wise, you know. It all intertwines, you know what I'm saying? Rap, sewing, clothes, costumes, he did it all. Mm. Yep. That's a cool life, though. Yep, living in L.A. I'm a regular guy. You know, cool. <laughs> That's four. That's four. Open up. What's up? My name's Cal Rock. I'm the Kaki Mochi Fun Crew in Hawaii. What up? What's up, Ariz? Waikiki B Boy Crew, KMF, Kaki Mochi Funk, holding it down with the big fish tank. What up, Devin? B Boy Kosher and Kaki Mochi Fun Crew in the house with Brazilian and Lewis member. Show? 
Let me know. So I'm sitting here. Yeah. Usually like 8.30, 9 o'clock, start it off over here in Waikiki. This is the b-boy spot. Everybody in every country, come right here. This is hip hop right here. Hey, I think I need to sit over there for a second. Okay, here he goes, here he goes, here he goes, here he goes, here he goes. Good job, guys! Woo! Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! That was crazy, man! Did you see that? Oh my god! He just went... And then, you know, that the continuous fat. momentum. He just rolled out. God! He is the... <laughs> what do you mean computer generated? You saying this woman right here don't look like herself? Hey, how's it going? See? I didn't say hey, nice tits. Man, what you say? Hip hop in Hawaii. Yeah, fuck well. Nah, we alright.